big stick. Then called for taunting as we see it again. And it went right over toward the Indianapolis sideline, pointed his finger, and that's going to bring the flag every time. Big penalty, moves it all the way to the 36-yard line of Tennessee. Minshew to the air, taking a deep shot to the end zone. Pierce, he's got it! Touchdown! His first touchdown of the season! Gardner Minshew said, we got to get Pierce going, maybe a deep shot early. Well, there's the deep ball early to Alec Pierce. As you're going to see right here at the end, he does a great job of getting both feet down, dragging that for just a little... Make sure it's a touchdown, but I think both feet were down there before. Yeah, I think the first one was down when he first caught it. Second foot got down, and he also dragged it before he stepped out of his go routes this season, the most of any player, but only nine targets on those routes. Well, he's got number 10, and he's got his first touchdown of the season. Spears on the return from the five. Spears is stopped at the 25-yard line. You have to go back to last December. Gardner Minshew was yeah. talking about that yesterday. We, we asked Gardner if he ever gets frustrated. He said, yeah, but he's the nicest guy in the world. So he just goes, to come, hey, coach, you know, if it's possible, you know, if it's not too much, I'd like to get a few more targets here and there. Here's Henry with some more room. And Derrick Henry rips off a nine-yard run. Odengbo on the tackle and a good start here for Derrick Henry this afternoon. You know, the Indianapolis Colts, just like any team that's trying to take on Derrick Henry, they got to get him stopped in the backfield. But because if you don't, he gets down feet, get downhill and he's a load. And Henry falls forward for the first down. So we talked about the Forrest Buckner to start this game. And if those guys up front, him and those other guys up front, don't get penetration, it could be a long day for them defensively with Derrick Henry getting to the second and third levels where, as we know, Matt, business decisions get made sometimes. Yeah, and you've got to stop Derrick Henry early. Yeah. You know, you can't let him get into his runs because he's so physical when he gets into that three, four, five steps. Levis fakes over the middle. Henry drops it. That'll make it second down for Tennessee. These two teams met back in week five in Indianapolis. It was a 23-16 Colts victory. Tennessee had won five straight in the series until that October win. Five-yard pickup for Derrick Henry. For, for someone who's just 250 pounds, he's so nimble as well. Just watch him get in the air and cut right behind the defender. Almost comes out of that thing. And he eats up yards when it doesn't even look like he's getting four or five yards right there. But he's to him, you, you have to stop him early. And if there's not penetration in the run game, he's going to get a momentum going. It's tough to bring down. Tennessee fifth worst in the NFL converting third downs this year. Just 31%. Third and five. Levis steps up to elude the rush. He's going to keep it himself up high and hit hard. And with that spot, he's got the first down. And the fans love it in Nashville. This place has come to life, and sometimes you need to do this as a quarterback. Set the tone. I'm not sure I ever did this in my life, but he goes up. And goes after it to get this first down early in the game, setting the tone as a young player. I don't know if you had biceps like that either, man. Oh, no, 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 not even close. <laughs> not even close. Well, Mike Vrabel has talked about Will Levis's toughness. We've met with him a couple of times now. He doesn't seem to be intimidated by much, and he certainly was not scared running on third and five. Play block at one. Here's Spears. 
across midfield. And he takes Quiddy Pay for a ride with him to the 40 six yard line a gain of eight you can see what the game plan is here for the Tennessee Titans they're trying to get to the edges and they're collapsing down the edges Nick Akini with uh, Nick Westbrook Akini collapses the edge so it leaves the corner on an island against the running back with Derrick Henry he could run around you run you over with Taji Spears he just sticks his foot in the ground gets north and south and picks up seven yards this is an area in the field you got to watch out for maybe a deep shot second down and two Levis steps up, looking deep. There it is for Chris Moore. What a catch! And he dropped it coming down. There's also a flag down. Moore came down with it, could not secure it. Daryl Baker had the coverage. And meanwhile, back at the line of scrimmage, here's Craig Rolstad. Holding. Offense. Number 55. It's a 10 yard penalty. Second down. That's on the center, Aaron Brewer, but certainly Tennessee was looking to take that shot. Yeah, it's the logo part of the field, right? When you get right to that middle of the field, it's the logo area that teams like to take shots, particularly in that second and short. When you've got an efficient play on first down, you get into second and five or less, you feel pretty good about it going, you know, going down the field vertical, because if you don't hit, you're still gonna be in third and five. What you don't expect is a penalty to push you back now and put you at second and 12. So after the penalty, it's second down and 12. That is pass deflected at the line. Third and long as we check in with New York. An NFL Today update with JP and Nate. Back to Andrew Catalan. An old lady in Vegas. <laughs> Nate has got all the lines. Third down and 12. Three straight incompletions for Levis. Replay here. Odangbo jumped. Levis throwing it up for grabs. Moore down there and incomplete. But Dio Odangbo flinched at the line. We talked about offside. Defense, number 54. The five-yard penalty. Replay down. We talked about Will Levis in the open as well. Andrew, how he hasn't taken a lot of shots downfield. Here he is getting the cadence. Listen to this. This is what you want to see from a young player. It's the growth and development. A young guy that's making six starts now, coming out, starting to feel himself a little bit, using some more cadence, and understanding we got the penalty, take a shot down the field. I think that's good growth. It's a good sign of growth for Will Levis. So it's third down and eight. Levis looking sideline. Hopkins incomplete. Threw it over his head. Baker had the coverage, and on fourth down, Mike Rabel will send out his punter. Yeah, Will Levis was hot right there. Mm. They've got the go route to DeAndre Hopkins right here. He gives a little stutter off the ball. It looks like it's a little bit of a hold, and maybe that's what Will was thinking, but the two of them not on the same page with where they wanted to locate that football. Ryan Stonehouse having a great year as the AFC Special Teams Player of the Week. However, one area he's looking to improve upon is cutting down on the touchbacks, and this is an area in the field where he has to be careful. He leads the NFL in touchbacks this season. McKenzie is back deep. McKenzie lets it go, and it's another touchback for Stonehouse. That's his 10th. Be stuttering off the ball. You're expecting things on time, but I also think you need to pick your battles as a quarterback. It's early in this ball game, and, and you want, you know, your Hall of Fame type receiver. To be feeling confident. Josh Downs on the reception picks up five. Big injury update. Here's AJ. Andrew Colts right tackle Braden Smith has a knee injury. His return is questionable, so that's why Blake Freeland is in the game right now, guys. All right, AJ, thank you. Smith has missed four games this season between hip and wrist injuries. And currently not on the field for Indianapolis. On second and five, here is Moss. And Zach Moss comes close to a first down. Might be a half yard shy. Jack Gibbons on the tackle. So Jonathan Taylor out today. Had surgery after injuring his right thumb last week against Tampa Bay. He did not put him on IR. They're hopeful he'll come back in the next three, four, maybe five weeks. And Gardner Minshew told us there's not one guy who can replace 
Jonathan Taylor, we all have to raise our level. Let's we'll see what they can do on third and one. But they're supremely confident in Zach Moss. Gardner pulls it, looking to throw. He's got a man on the sideline. And a flag is down. They're calling it incomplete on the field. Let's see what the penalty marker is. I think this is in the spot of maybe an illegal man downfield. It looked like they were going with a little RPO action and maybe an offensive lineman got downfield too early. Ineligible man downfield. Offense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is fourth down. Yeah, I think that was on Blake number Freeland. Number 73. Yes, they just announced at number 73, Blake, Blake Freeland, who just came in. You gotta wonder if he's used to all of these RPOs and there's a rhythm and a timing. Plays, yeah. and, and Gardner Mitch, you held on to that ball long, but it's interesting. We talked to Shane Steichen about fourth down situations yesterday <laughs> and being aggressive, not choosing to do it here, backed up at the 30 yard line. Yeah, fourth and a half yard, but the punter Rigoberto Sanchez is out. Eric Garrer is the deep man for Tennessee from his own 18-yard line. Garrer makes two men miss and then crunched the shy of the 30 with 6.58 to go. Colts linebacker Zaire Franklin, he's wearing breast cancer awareness cleats this uh, today, rather, in honor of his aunt who passed away in 2021. He told us she got to see him play his first game as a captain in 2020 versus the Jets, and he was glad she saw that moment. No doubt he's still making her proud. Yeah, no doubt, AJ. Thank you. Having a fantastic season. Zaire Franklin out of Syracuse. Will Levis throws <laughs> to Spears, and Spears gets up to the 38-yard line. Just trying to get ahead of Matt Ryan for the inevitable <laughs> Harold Landry BC comment that's on the horizon. How did that UVA Syracuse basketball game well, go? That was a different sport, Tiki. That's all right. Just making sure. Hey, just to circle it back though, the My Claws My Cleat thing yeah. is is really an awesome initiative that the NFL has done. And I always took pride in it as a player of having different things to put on your cleats to represent great organizations that are doing awesome work in different communities. Yeah, I love the breast cancer awareness. My mother is a 26-year survivor. <laughs> Here's Derrick Henry. And we'll see where they spot it. Very close to a first down. No signal yet. Now we do have a signal. A first down for Tennessee. A Tennessee team that has gone 4 0 in this building and 0 7 everywhere else. Kind of a strange deal. It's good to be home if you're a Titans fan. It's, it's good to be here. I think this offensive line, though, is the story of the early game right now. They're playing well up front, pushing the Colts defensive line off the ball, allowing Derrick Henry to get into a flow in the run game. Right back to Henry. Oh, and he is hit hard. EJ Speed coming up to make the play. A loss of one. And on cue. Yeah. <laughs> Stone in the run game. Well, I mean, look, we give the we, we tell you what needs to be done to stop Derrick Henry. You have to sell out. You have to be aggressive, either shooting gaps as a D lineman or seeing holes and, and, and meeting the defender or meeting the, the running back in that hole as a defender. And that's what EJ Speed did there. So Derrick Henry can't get an idea of what he wants to do with his feet. When you have great running backs, quick penetration stops the run game. And Colts with a great job of it right there. Henry, a little more daylight here. And he brings it up to the 44 yard line. Odangbo on the tackle. And it's third down. Talked about the home and away difference for Mike Vrabel's team. It is quite remarkable on third downs. They're 40 percent converting in this building. And it looks like the left tackle Jalen Duncan jumped early. Ball start offense number 79 five yard penalty. Still third down. And that's the rookie left tackle, a sixth round pick out of Maryland, making the start for the second consecutive week. That yeah. was funny. You heard Samson uh, Ebukam just say, false start. False start. <laughs> false start. You can tell, though, it was, it was in the plan for the Tennessee Titans to come in and use cadence, understanding that the Indianapolis Colts have been good rushing the passer. I think six sacks last week. They've been getting after it. You have to find different ways to neutralize that if you're a quarterback. That's the 20th false start of the year against Tennessee, second most to the NFL. Levis hit as he throws, and it's 
for the moment, a loose football. Julian Blackman had it. We'll see if they call an interception. Then now Levis is going to run with it because there was no whistle. Levis to the end zone. There was a lot going oh, on on Lord. this play. Okay, first of all, is it an interception? Yes. That's what you have to look at. And it looks like he has his hands under the ball. It's hard to it's tell hard. whether or not it hits the ground. But then he gets up and runs with it. So we've got to sort out, is it an interception? Is it a fumble? Was he touched down? Was there a whistle? <laughs> I, I don't think I heard a whistle. But we'll give Will Levis credit. I know you coach uh, five-year-old flag football. It's kind of similar to what we just saw here. Yeah, a jumbled mess. Yeah. That, that, that is exactly what five-year-old flag football is like. We'll see right here. It's like it looks Baker. like he gets yeah, both hands a... underneath. It looks like a clean interception. And then he gets up. Ball comes out. I mean, what awareness Levis by Will Levis. Yes. Balls on it. That's Julian They're ruling on the field. The original play was a fumble. Recovered by Indianapolis, fumbled back to Tennessee. It'll be first and 10, Tennessee. He meant interception. interception. No, fumble. I, I don't know if they're calling this, oh, this, maybe this the attempt pass. to throw yeah. was a fumble. Could be. Let's look at the attempt to throw now. It's Will it went Levis. Up in the air. Will Levis drops back to pass. His arm gets hit, so is the ball loose? Nah. Or did he push it forward? To me, that looks like a forward pass. Yeah. Now, the question then becomes, is it an interception by Julian Blackman? We have Gene Serator here to give us some clarity. Gene, what do you think and what do you see? I'm going to do my best. I, uh, <laughs> what they did, you guys are right on this end now. They ruled this pass by Will Levis was a forward, or was a fumble push forward. I, I think to it's me, going I feel forward, like Gene. he has control as his arms going forward, guys. So if that's the case, as we watch our that replay, now it is whether it was an interception or not. I believe that he did have his hands under from the angles that I looked at. If that was also the case, then you would have an interception, then fumbled by the defense, recovered then by the original offense. We call that an A-B-A, -A, and then it would be the offensive ball first and 10. That's where they are as they ruled on this, uh, on the fumble, and I think uh, they're going to stay with this one, guys. Yeah, wow, a lot to sort out there. Thank you, Gene. First and 10 for Tennessee. Levis, a screen to Henry. There goes Derrick Henry, tripped up from behind. Julian Blackman was able to bring him down, but Henry goes for 19. Yeah, this is a this is a crazy little setup here for this screen. You see Derrick Henry just scooting out to the right. We used to call these slip screens. You'd run up, you'd, you'd dummy fake to block the defender and just slip behind him. Tennessee runs a little tempo here right back to Henry. Really going back to that crazy play, the only thing that matters is really the stats. Whether it's an interception for <laughs> Levis and Blackman, which I know I'd much rather take the fumble. Yeah, I, would, I, would, I would fumble all so, day. Yeah. I think Will Levis will take it. <laughs> I like what I like what Tennessee's doing here, though, using a little bit of tempo after some of these explosive plays, these big chunk plays that they've used. They've been a team that hasn't used much tempo all year. On the other side of the ball, the Colts have done a lot of that. But I like kind of changing it up, getting into a rhythm for this offense. And Colts have run the most no huddle plays this season. Second and ten. And this pressure coming, and he gets rid of it. That was DeForest Buckner bearing down on Levis. And now it's third and long. Yeah, you get this pressure right up the gut for DeForest Buckner. Look, they've, been, they've done a lot of games up front. They don't bring a lot of pressure. In the 15 sacks they had in the three-game winning streak, only four of them was an extra rusher. They do it up front with DeForest and, and Quiddy Pay and, and Samson uh, Ebukam. They, they can get home with just four. And they do it in the back end, too. It's tight coverage in the back end, sticky coverage, which allows DeForest Buckner to go to work in those games. It takes time for those games to work out, and the coverage in the back end helps that out. Third and ten. Levis to the outside. He's got a first down to Chris Moore. Knocked out by Jalen Jones, but Levis and the Titans move the chains after a gain of 11. Yeah, this is a good route design here. You see Nick Westbrook McKinney pulling the cover three safety, who is Jalen Jones, all the way back, which leaves Hop D. No, that's not D Hop. That's Chris Moore wide open in the flat to get the first down. I think one of the things Will Levis has done well uh, in his six starts is throwing the ball to the outside of the field, driving the football outside. Good, accurate throw on a third down for the conversion. 
Now just outside the red zone, first and ten. Here goes Okonkwo. And he picks up a couple of yards on the play for Chig. That's his second carry of the year. You don't usually see the Jet, you know, sweep. <laughs> With the tight end, I, I was gonna go there. I I prefer it with a guy with a little more speed. Right. It's really, it's kind of hard for the tight end to out leverage the defense. Yeah, I guess you're hoping for just complete disguise or yeah. confusion on the other end. Yeah, Tim Kelly's gonna look at this on replay and say, "Hey, Chick, just put your foot in the ground and go north and south." I think Graves was saying to him right there, "What are we doing?" <laughs> Second down, it's Henry. He's got a head of steam again. Henry out of bounds right near the first down marker. This is this is just a simple outside zone, man. Look how fast. Look how fast he gets to the edge. And he knows it. He sees he has EJ speed out leverage. All he's got to do is get to the corner, maybe turn it. You know, he knows guys are going to go low on him. 100%. And I mean, they had a free runner. Tommy yeah. Wall Adabare is coming through free. And Derrick Henry's just got that long speed to be able to get to the edge and make it look like he wasn't even there. Tennessee, 38% in the red zone. Second worst. Only the Jets have a lower percentage. But at home, 73%. And away from home, 20%. Levis on the move, throws low and incomplete in the direction of Josh Wiley, the rookie tight end. In the final minute of the opening quarter here in Nashville. Yeah, he rushed this one. Will Levis, get, we won't see the replay, but he rushed this one. If he'd have waited, taken a couple more steps, Matt, maybe he gets that throw in. Yeah, and I think sometimes there's contact that's going on in the end zone, and you're unsure if he's going to come out of it clean. It looks better after the throw. Yeah. You know, it looks cleaner after the throw. It's a good, safe place to miss on a first down in the low red zone. Second and goal. <laughs> Run it inside. That's Spears. And he's down to the six. Interestingly, this Tennessee team in the red zone throws 58% of the time, which is fifth highest in the NFL. Not something you'd expect with Derrick Henry. Yeah, it is It is a little bit surprising when you have a big physical back and, and kind of the number two in Tajay Spears where he's so dynamic making guys miss. But I like what they're doing early, going with some misdirection. I know we kind of joked about the jet sweep to Jay, but... I like them using some misdirection, trying to keep these linebackers for the Colts off balance. On third and goal, Levis with time to the end zone, incomplete. DeAndre Hopkins looking for a flag. He was covered tightly by Nick Cross, and no flag down. Yeah, and this is just getting DeAndre Hopkins across the back, and Nick Cross right here, back to him. There's plenty of contact there. Wow. I think in the, you know, it, it, We'll see how the game shakes out, how they're going to call it. But to me, this is a penalty. This is a penalty. Your hands are on them. You're impeding DeAndre's Hop uh, DeAndre Hopkins' ability to go adjust to that football. The crowd here is, is not happy about it. Boos raining down as Nick Folk comes out from 24 yards away. And he's now made 75 in a row inside 40 yards. DeAndre Hopkins still pleading his case. Can't believe a penalty was not called on that third and goal play. I think he's got a good case. I mean, he's making it back there. This is a guy that's played a lot of football and understands what is the legal contact, what is pass interference, all those things. We all plead our cases, players, don't get me wrong. But, <laughs> you know, I, I agree with him in that situation. I thought that was a penalty. 11th year for Hopkins in the league. Now Nick Folk in his 16th season will kick it away to McKenzie. McKenzie calls looks like a half fair catch and then took a knee. Either way, it'll be at the 25-yard line. Back in the booth, Matt Ryan, Tiki Barber. Big kudos to Tiki. Earlier this oh, week, named you. a semifinalist for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. First time in your career that that has happened, and we're I, all rooting for you. I'm proud of you. It. Twelve years it took a long time, but what I really would have liked, Andrew, is the vest memo. Why didn't <laughs> I get the vest memo? I got like 16,000 of them. Yeah. Jeez. Congrats, Tiki. We'll bring Thank one. You. It's long overdue. Yeah, we're proud of you, man. Thank you, brother. Good luck.
Zach Moss on first down right up the middle, and that'll be the final play of the first quarter. A lot going on in this opening quarter. At the end of one, Tennessee 10, Indianapolis 7.